Okay. So did you enjoy the, uh, the keynote? And you can uh, either press your space bar to speak or you can um, or unmute yourself. Again, giving everyone a chance to, to get in the room. I thought it was outstanding. Just uh, just every time she was saying something, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. This is this is this is true. This is true. This is what we need to do. So she definitely laid out a vision for teaching and learning that I think that um, uh, we'd be wise to 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 adopt in many ways. So thank you very much for being here. Okay. Uh, my name is Steve Hickman. I am a coordinator here at RCOE. And um, um, I'm going to present, of course, an introduction to coding with Minecraft education. And um, before I do that, let's kind of use the chat. I want to get an idea of, of who's in the room so that I can uh, maybe, maybe address uh, the specific needs of some. I'm sure I won't be able to get to all, but uh, just give us a, I already have your name there in the chat if you say something, but uh, where are you from? And um, and what do you do? Okay, or what grade do you teach? All right, kindergarten teachers, love it. All right, fourth grade from Menifee, wonderful. Third grade, special needs. First grade, middle school science, love it. Okay. All right. All right. So one of the beautiful things about um, Minecraft is, is number one, so many of our kids already uh, know Minecraft and enjoy it. And so we have that instant connection. We have that instant um, breaking down of those affective barrier, barriers to learning when we can say, hey, you can learn coding with Minecraft or hey, you can learn um, you know, chemistry with Minecraft. It's a great introduction uh, for Minecraft. Now, I won't go over everything that Minecraft can do, uh, but <clears throat> I will kind of go over this coding because that is such a I think an important skill for the future of our, our young people that they understand really how computers work. And most of all, in this new economy, which could very well just be a gig economy where uh, we can't always depend on these big companies to hire us or even the government to be able to earn a living, uh, you know, creating uh, with, uh, um, through code. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen and We'll get started. Let me make sure I share the right one. Screen two, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So what we'll do today, we'll learn how to use a, a Minecraft a code connection, which is uh, the the feature that's embedded in Minecraft Education Edition, and uh, that's we can students can use either. Microsoft Make Code or Tinker in order to do uh, their coding. Uh, we'll look at a few of the uh, tutorial activities and kind of go through them. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, kind of work together to uh, solve some of the some of the challenges that are involved in the tutorial. And of course, we'll kind of walk through the Minecraft world and and give you some additional resources that you can find um, to. Um, yeah, to continue your learning with Minecraft. So. Now, Minecraft Education Edition, it's different from the, the normal Minecraft. Well, first of all, it is Minecraft, but it has some additional features for educators that we'll go over. And it's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and now it's in beta for, for Android. And so if you have uh, Chromebooks and your Chromebooks can run a Android, which I'm I would hope that most new ones that are purchased will be able to, uh, you'll be able to use Minecraft Education Edition. Now it does require users to have a Microsoft Education account, but if your district is not a Microsoft district, educators can get a, a, a free Microsoft 365 account. And I will put that link that's there in the chat for you, just in case you don't have the slide deck. And I'm gonna copy that link. And where's my chat? Chat, there it is. And everyone in the meeting. And so that right there is the link 
to set up a free Microsoft account if your district doesn't already have one. Now, if your district does have one, then chances are it won't let you sign up for another one, but you shouldn't need to. Uh, you may have to talk to your IT director to um, allow you to use that account for, for Microsoft Education Edition. Okay. And so just for a second here, um, Minecraft Education Edition. So how have you, have you heard of this before? Haven't heard of it before? And we're gonna try a little activity here. I'm gonna give you permission to annotate the screen. So, and if you go and you look on your screen and you get the annotate button, you find that, and then you find the stamp and then find the star, okay? And that, and with that, you'll be able to annotate. And we're just gonna find the star here and just place a star where you are. You know, good, 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 okay. I see people are, are, are doing this and I've, I've heard of this before. Uh, no, no experts, you should find the annotate. It should be right where the screen sharing button is or on your toolbar there, okay. Okay, all right, so we've heard of it. Um, no experts there. Well, that's good because uh, I am uh, proficient. I, I, I can't call myself an expert yet because there's still quite a bit to learn uh, with Minecraft. Now, now my son, he's an expert and, and he, he taught me just about everything I know in terms of just playing Minecraft. But um, the education edition features are, are pretty extensive as well, so. Okay, some have used it before, good, good, okay. All right, and so we have uh, you know, some familiarity, but uh, not a great, so it looks like you're in the right place. So hopefully I'll give you enough to get started and to really try this out because it really is a fantastic tool for teaching. And not just for elementary, but middle school and high school as well, when you look at all of the features that are available in Minecraft Education Edition. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear that and stop the annotations and let's go for next part. Okay, so one thing we're not trying to, to as this says, turn you into gamers. You don't have to be a gamer to use Minecraft Education Edition. If you've ever watched children play, uh, you see just they, they play closer to pay co close attention and you find them shaping their communication skills, their emotional control, their resilience, their persistence, and, and even engineering. If you've got Legos or something like that, where they're actually building things, you know, it's a well known that people learn naturally through a combination of observation and trial and error and play based practice and play is a natural human instinct. We just uh, tend to suppress this instinct as we get older. I think about my son who who wasn't a great student, he's in college now, but he was, he was a good student. But, um, you know, give him something, especially in the sciences or math and his eyes kind of glaze over. But um, he, he loves to write, he loves to create. But when I look at some of the things that he does, he, was, he played Pokemon for, for example, quite a bit. And then he could tell me just about everything uh, any Pokemon char character character could do. But given the periodic table, and he's, you know, what do I do with that, right? And so it's, it's, it's amazing to me that, you know, the brain takes in what it wants to take in, you know, because learning the, the complete chart of Pokemon characters, or even Super Smash Brother characters, learning that is, is genuine learning. Um, but he doesn't have those affective barriers, so he's willing to put forth the effort to learn it. And so when we can couch um, topics like coding or chemistry in the Minecraft world, we end up breaking down those barriers and, and allow students to really take in this information without, you know, perhaps the drudgery that some people might perceive learning to be. Okay. And so and game-based learning is really trying to bring back more of the play aspects of learning across K-12 grade levels and not just for young students. There have been a few interesting research studies and books published about the importance of play. Uh, notably, in his book, um, 
play, how it shapes the brain and opens the imagination and invigorates the soul. Dr. Stuart Brown explains why play is essential to our social skills, adaptability, intelligence, creativity, and ability to problem solve and more. We need to play more than ever, as it's the very means by which we prepare for the unexpected, search out new solutions, and remain optimistic. Another book is Play Equals Learning, How Play Motivates and Enhances Children's Cognitive and Social Emotional Growth. In this work by Singer, Galinkoff, and Hirsch Pasek, um, these experts in child development and learning explain that our, our culture has forgotten about the importance of play for children's development. They present a powerful argument about the persuasive and long-term effects of play. And they urge educators to reconsider the ways play facilitates develop, development across domains. Over 40 years of developmental research indicates that play has enormous benefits to offer children. Play offers children uh, with the opportunity to maximize their attention spans. They learn to get along with peers, to cultivate creativity, uh, to work through their emotions and gain academic skills that are the foundation for later learning. Topics such as coding or chemistry can both can be both time consuming, labor intensive, and intimidating. Uh, fortunately, Microsoft Education Edition has tools uh, that make topics such as these far less intimidating and even more enjoyable than they already are. And so why coding? Well, th this is, I, I mentioned it a bit uh, before, but you know, coding drives innovation. You know, we think about the self-driving cars and robot assisted surgery and social media and computer science. All of these are revolutionizing every aspect of our lives. Coding is a fundamental skill that children need to learn so they can lead this movement. Coding also allows children to be creative problem solvers. They can create projects they do that do really amazing things. Coding provide, builds confidence. It's incredible, incredibly empowering for children to be able to create projects and show them off to family and friends. And coding, of course, is best learned early. Learning to code is, is, is similar to learning a second language. In fact, it is a language. Uh, the earlier that children are exposed to the fundamental topics like sequencing and loops and co conditionals, the more deeply they can absorb these concepts. And then coding translates to success in other areas. Learning the program supports learning in other areas like math and reading and science. Coding allows students to explore basic computer science terminology and may contribute to greater interest in computer science as a future career. And we know that uh, going into the future, uh, that's going to be uh, the, some of the highest paying uh, careers available to students. And they already are, in fact. Okay. And then, of course, in order for all students to be future ready, we have to empower them with the literacy of today and tomorrow. All students are familiar with popular, popular apps like Instagram and YouTube and Snapchat. But do they understand the algorithms and code, -based, code base embedded in them to make connections to the world? The skills of reasoning and logic, computational thinking, and the structure of a programming language can prepare our students for not just technical jobs in the future, but to bring their ideas to life to make the world better via technology. And of course, it would behoove, behoove us to work with our students to identify the problems in the world that they're passionate about and empower, empower them with the technical skills to bring solutions to life. Introducing coding early in their academic career might also address the gender and diversity gap that exists in the tech industry. And so let's watch a quick, quick video before we dig into uh, the Minecraft world. And we'll get this, this video and it will kind of give us an overview of what coding in Minecraft is like. So make sure I share my computer sound and we'll go ahead and share this quick video. And some, a few things have changed in, the, in Minecraft Education Edition since this uh, video was published, but it does give us a good overview. 
Hi, I'm Susie, and I'm excited to show you how to code in Minecraft Education Edition. You may have used Code Builder before as a companion app to Minecraft, but now you can open Code Builder in the game. This feature is available for all users of Minecraft Education Edition on Windows, Mac, and iPad. It's a great way to continue coding in Minecraft after you do an hour of code. So let's get started. Go ahead and launch Minecraft Education Edition. When the game opens, click the library button to access the library of Minecraft worlds. The library is another awesome new feature. Find and import the Voyage Aquatic World. Then go back to your play menu, open the template and create a new world. You can also import the Voyage Aquatic World by entering this URL into your browser and it will launch in the game. Okay, we're in. You may notice these keyboard commands. We've added them to make it simpler to learn Minecraft controls. You can turn them off in your settings. Let's head into the aquarium. Click the spacebar twice to fly and use the WASD keys to move. Spacebar twice again drops us in. It's time to learn how to code. No need to hold your breath. Launch Code Builder by... Oh no, sorry about that. Hi, I'm Susie, and I'm excited to show you how My to bad. open Bring this URL into your browser, and it will launch in the game. Okay, we're in. You may notice these keyboard commands. We've added them to make it simpler to learn Minecraft controls. You can turn them off in your settings. Let's head into the aquarium. Click the spacebar twice to fly, and use the WASD keys to move. Spacebar twice again drops us in. It's time to learn how to code. No need to hold your breath. Launch Code Builder by simply typing the letter C into the chat window. If you're on an iPad or using touch controls, touch the agent icon next to the pause button on the top of the screen. Let's add some dolphins to this aquarium using Microsoft Make Code. First, I add a spawn block from the mobs menu and change animal to dolphin. Then I grab a repeat loop and change the number to four. I'm going to program a chat command for when I type the word dolphin. So now when we go back into the game and type dolphin as a chat command, I will spawn four dolphins. There they are. I can close the coding window just by going back to the Minecraft screen and bring it back at any time with C or touching the agent icon. You did it! Once you've practiced using Code Builder, visit education.minecraft.net slash CS for more lessons, trainings, and curriculum. Happy coding! Okay, so that gives us a, an overview of, uh, of how this works. And now we'll kind of dig into the Minecraft world and um, I'll kind of talk you through some of the options. So um, you can see the Minecraft screen right there, right? Kathy, you're the person closest to me. So can you nod and say, yes, okay, I <laughs> see it, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I will say play, okay. And so here I have the option, so I can view the, the existing worlds that I have, or I can view the library. Uh, one, that, one neat thing about Minecraft Education Edition, and of course this exists in, in, in the regular Minecraft as well, but your students can work together. They can play together so they can join a world and they can collaborate right within the Minecraft world to solve problems or to build or whatever the case might be. And you can also import worlds that maybe a student has saved and then they can save it and others can import that world into theirs and they can work. Or as a teacher, you might be able to create a world and they can import that world right into uh, their computer. So in this case, we're gonna view the library. And as you see, they've kind of changed this a bit from the video. So if you are uh, a teacher really of any content area, or if you are, of course, an elementary teacher, then you have all of these options with several pre-built um, lessons. So for example, I'll just touch upon the math. And so we have the Common Core grade three, four, five, fractions and additional lessons that are available to, um, to teachers and to students. So if you're looking for some fun additional practice for your students, um, this may be the place to go. And of course, we'll go back out of there. And they also have a build challenges. So if you just wanna have students uh, kind of raise maybe a little, 
little competition or just to get them familiar. Several different things that they have opportunities to build uh, through the Minecraft world. Okay. And then maybe you're teaching um, uh, biomes and then you have a lesson on uh, maybe the deserts or the oceans. Several different biomes that you can just create worlds within the Minecraft within Minecraft, and these can be great additions to uh, your lessons on the environment. And then, let's see. And then of course, the how to play. So they have several tutorials. Uh, this is kind of the basics here, but we're gonna go over to additional tutorials. You know, I think about this, this chemistry tutorial, I have to say something about this, because in my own experience as, as a student, one of the things that was, extremely intimidating to me was chemistry and how everyone talked about how difficult chemistry was. And so I avoided it, you know, for really throughout my, my high school career and didn't even really take it until college. But I just wonder if I had a tool like this, you know, like Minecraft and, and the chemistry, um, chemistry feature that's embedded into Minecraft. And I got that early introduction to chemistry and what it was like. And, and really it wasn't, it's not as intimidating as people said it was, but if I had that early introdu introduction, that might have prompted me to, to pursue or at least not be so intimidated about chemistry. And I think, of course, the same thing applies for code. So we're going to go to this code builder tutorial. And from here, I can just click create world. Okay, and here we are in the world for a code builder and this, this will offer several challenges for uh, coding. And so, but before I do that, let me introduce you to a few of the features of Minecraft Education Edition. So, so first of all, one thing that, that's really nice about Minecraft is that as a teacher, you can embed your instruction right into the Minecraft world. They have three different size uh, boards that you can use, the slate, the poster, and the board. And all of those, really the only difference is the amount of information that you can put on there. So if you wanna put lessons and instructions for your students, you can put them on these boards here. Okay. Now, one problem in Minecraft, of course, is uh, griefing. You know, well, where, where students destroy other uh, people's work or the teachers might uh, destroy um, or destroy the teacher's work. And so one solution that they've come up with uh, is the allow and the de deny block. And so if you build on allow blocks, that means you can add to it, you can destroy things. But if you build on the deny blocks, you can't change what's on that block. So if you have something that you don't want your students as, you're, as, as they're working within your world, um, you can build it on a deny block and they're not able to destroy it or change it. Uh, you have the uh, the non-player characters, it's called the, an NPC. And with those non-player characters, they don't move, they, they're just there to give instructions. And so they click on the non-player character and, and they can tell you a story. They can, um, well, you have to put the story in there, but uh, you, they can tell you a story, they can give uh, further instructions. They can also trigger other events within Minecraft. And so, and they can also link to external sources. So you don't always have to put everything in Minecraft through an NPC. You can just have them click and it'll give the link to the external sources that you want your students to incorporate into their learning. Now, one thing about Minecraft, because it is in an unlimited world, it's, it can be difficult to get students uh, to stay where they're supposed to be, right? <laughs> and do as you want them to be. Uh, and, do, and do what you want them to do. So they have border blocks and you can create a border around a specific area. And in this way, students cannot go over it or under it. They have to stay within those borders unless they have special privileges. And then of course, there is the camera and the portfolio. This is great because as a teacher, I don't necessarily have to be in the Minecraft world with the students. Heidi, can you um, uh, allow the person that's in the waiting room for me? Thank you. And then um, we have, um, yes, the camera. So 
one benefit of this is if a student does something, they can document their learning. So maybe they, they put up a poster and, and maybe that poster provides an explanation of what they've built. And they can take a picture of it with the camera, add it to the portfolio, and then those pictures that they take inside the Minecraft world can be exported out as JPEG videos or picture files, and they can Im incorporate those maybe into a slide deck or a presentation that they can present you know, to their peers or to the class or to the teacher or whatever the case might be. And so that's, that's a great way to, for students to document their learning as they go. Okay. So those are some of the education uh, edition features. Now, as far as code goes, well, every student is gonna get once they um, enter into Code Builder, they're going to get the agent. And if you notice, there's my agent. It's Steve H's agent. Now, this agent doesn't do anything until I tell it to. Okay. And so, just like your computer, without the instructions, without the code, it does not do anything. And so, the code, uh, the agent is the same way. It only does what we tell it to do. And so, we'll we'll use this agent to. Um, um, for our coding. And this is this is the kind of, I've seen um, a few, uh, what is it, hour of code activities where students are doing uh, specific things within the, the Minecraft world to, to, create to create activities or to complete activities. One thing I like about this is that it's unlimited. You know, students can do whatever their imagination says do okay and so and whatever their skill level and their coding level says says do and so that really makes it interesting because there is no limitation um, to what the students can do with the code all right and so a couple tips that they have here okay so first of all um, as you have your agent you want to pay attention to the the orientation so you want the 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 agent to go forward you want to make sure of course that it's facing the right way, okay? Um, the, again, the agent doesn't do anything on its own, but you can teleport it to where you wanna be, okay? And again, it's just giving us some tips. You can use the, re the repeat command to, to uh, repeat actions. And your agent has an inventory. So just as if you notice down here on the bottom where you see the, the box moving there, that's my inventory. That's, those are things that I have. Well, I don't have anything in there right now, but anything that I collect will show up there. And then, of course, the agent can't die. So he, the agent can go through, you know, anything. If you go as a, as a player, if you are in survival mode, you can drown, you can burn, you can explode, but your agent does not die. And the, urge, the agent also is not affected by gravity. So um, the agent can fly, go up, down, it doesn't really matter, so. Okay. And then finally, this is an NPC. So again, as teacher, as you, as you can work with these worlds or work with the existing worlds, you can add additional instruction uh, through the non-player characters. And when you right click on the non-player character, hey, I get um, a message here. Thank you for participating in the agent challenge and giving me giving some additional instructions for your students. So again, as teacher, you don't necessarily have to be in the world with the student. You can set it up so that the instructions are already there. And you know, by using allow, deny blocks and, and uh, border blocks, you can also set some parameters for where your students operate because students are you students who are accustomed to using Minecraft are always going to look for ways in which they can uh, circumvent the system, so to speak. So, okay, so I go out and I right click to open doors and now I'm going to enter into the challenge world. Okay. And so here we go. So here's my challenge. Okay. Uh, welcome to the agent trials. Uh, move your agent to the start plate to begin and you can stand on the start plate to use teleport to player to quickly get your agent into position. Again, be aware of your agent's rotation. You can rotate your agent using turn, program your agent to move forward or stop on the gold plate to complete the challenge. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna go right over here onto this plate and then I'm gonna press C for Code Builder. And again, I can choose uh, within Code Builder to use Microsoft Make Code or Tinker. I'm gonna go ahead and use 
um, make code. And hopefully that'll come up soon. It do usually doesn't take that long, but that would kind of ruin my presentation if, <laughs> if that didn't work. <laughs> okay. All right, interesting. That hasn't happened before. There we go, there we go. Okay, and so um, with MakeCode, there, there are several tutorials built in. So if we want students to do, to, just to learn how to code and get familiar with the interface, they can use these tutorials. Uh, we'll probably go back and come back to this chicken rain. It's kind of fun. And there are videos that can show students um, how to perform certain tasks. Uh, you can program both in Python and in JavaScript. And so if you want your students to, once they get through the block coding, maybe they want to move to the next level and actually use the coding language, they can do that as well. And then again, more uh, tutorials and things for students to build different things or to have their agent build uh, different things, okay? Okay, but in this case, we're just gonna go right here and start a new project and start fresh. And we're gonna call this Google Camp, okay, and create. All right, and so we can use block code, but again, if I wanted to go JavaScript, I could do that, but since I was an English teacher, I was not a science teacher, so that would not help me much. But I can also do Python if I want. Okay, so if your students are learning, and again, this is why this is not just elementary, so if you have actual our computer science classes, they could use this as well uh, to learn and become more familiar with the language. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go and use the block code. All right, and so again, going back to my challenge, I'm gonna back up a little bit. First thing I need to do is get my agent out of that room. Okay, so I'm going to go here on chat command, instead of run, I'm gonna change that to TP for teleport. Okay, and then I'm gonna go here. I wanna manipulate my agent. So I'm gonna click on agent and there it is, agent teleport to player. Okay, and so once I do, I have that command in there. Now I'm just gonna press my start button and I press T for my chat window. That'll bring that up. And then I can just type in TP, okay, that was my command. And lo and behold, there is my agent. I'm gonna back up a little bit, perhaps so you can see him a little better. Now you notice one thing, I have to go through this, uh, this wall. So the, one of the first things I'm going to have to do is turn this agent. So let's see, and I'll go C for code builder and so on chat command, and well, I'm gonna go ahead and just have him turn. So on chat command turn, I'll have the agent turn left. Okay. Nope, you let me just make it left. And then if I need that agent to turn right, I can do that as well, okay. And I'll do another one for right. <laughs> Okay, remember the agent doesn't do anything unless you tell it to. Well, in fact, it only does, no, not that one. It only does what, what we tell it to. And so there, and I'll change that to right. Okay, and so now at least let me get my, my, uh, my agent uh, oriented the right way. So I'm gonna press T and I'm just gonna type in left. And there he is, okay, so now he's facing the right way. So the thing about this is, of course, allowing students to, to problem solve, right? Well, how can, how can they make uh, the, the, the agent do what they want it to do? And so now as I look at this, oops, I'm gonna look and I say I have one, two, oops, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
line. So I want the agent to move forward 10 blocks. And so if you could, you can help me out here. So I'm gonna so go ahead and go enter cold builder. And, and let's see, on the chat command, and we'll give this one just walk, okay. All right, if you can use the chat, tell me which command I might use to have that agent move forward 10 blocks. Hmm. Can you see that okay? Move forward, agent move forward by 10, that's okay. So let's try that, agent move forward. And then I can change that number to 10. All right, and I, my chat command is walk. All right, and I press T and walk. Hit enter, and there he goes, there he goes. All right, so let's see. Oops. There he goes. All right, and it opened up a new world for a new challenge. And looking at the time, I probably won't be able to go through all of these challenges, but I did want to. Um, so in this one, I have to, again, use the code to make the agent go and to turn. Um, let's look at a few of the other challenges that are embedded here. And this one, the agent has to go up and down and vertical and use the movements. And, okay, then it, a bit of an obstacle course. And as I go over here, so now I'm gonna have the, the agent uh, do things for me and, and again, they can build and collect for me as well. So I can collect all of these different uh, minerals and things. Over here, I can have the agent farm for me. Give me the materials there. I've got some beetroot, some carrots, some potato, and I can give those things to my agent to work. Now, Again, in, in this short, short tutorial, it, it'd be pretty impossible to do all of this in an hour together. But one thing that I did um, notice as, as, as I was preparing for this, um, this activity, let's see this one right here. Okay, so, so sometimes when we look at these tasks and so here I have a finder's keeper. So in, in this case, I want to collect, I, I need to really break down this mountain here or this hill and collect all of the materials that are in it. And so for your students, one thing that we can do, and I'm going to just pause this for a second because I need to pull up um, something, let's see. You, we can import code. So if you wanna get your, your, your students started with maybe the teleport and the turns and all of those things, we can import code from uh, the make code world. So let me see if I can do that quickly if I can get to my Google Keep because I have some notes there. And, um, and if you have any questions, um, please go ahead and, and ask them in chat and I'll see if I can answer them while I'm pulling up this information. We have a super fast, um, super fast internet here at RCOE, but I think because perhaps of what's all what's going on, it's not as fast as it typically is. You see? Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. There were some questions around um, mm -hmm. like best age, uh, best age to start this or, or what ages is this appropriate for? Um, and some <sighs> questions around cost. I think those were answered, but mm -hmm. maybe you can speak to that a little bit. Oh yes, okay, so it is $5 per student, um, if you didn't see that. Um, again, you have to have a, a Microsoft education account, but age, 
I, I don't think there really is an appropriate age because uh, I can certainly see this working with uh, kindergarten students who are already using it. Um, I can see it, you know, working with uh, high schoolers and, and um, if they want to get a good introduction to um, chemistry, they could use the chemistry features to, to um, learn the chemistry. So, so, okay, so I found my code and, and what I want to do is I'm going to go back to code builder and I'm going to go to the home here. And one nice th feature is that I can import things from the make code um, website. So I have here and I can just import the, the code that I want. And so now as I'm going to deal with some of these challenges, I already have some code built in. So in this case, for this challenge, I want to go with mine. Okay. And I'm going to press play or start. And I'm going to get my, my agent in position, TP. Okay, there he is. Looks like he's face, facing the right way. Or is he? Nope, he isn't. So I'm going to have him turn. Looks like right. And not there. Press play again. So it's T to chat. And I'm going to have him turn right. There he goes. And now I have the code in there for mine. And then I'm just going to call T mine. And uh-oh, uh-oh, there's a problem, okay? And so when there's a problem, that's okay, because what we want to do is engage our students. And um, uh, there you go, he's moving awfully slow today, okay? And so we, let's look at the code. What's going on here? And so we have this mine, okay, we're going to repeat it two times this whole thing two times, but then we wanted the agent to destroy forward, move forward by one, and collect all. And so that cycle is going to happen, again, this cycle is going to happen 20 times. Move that over so it's not. All right, and then they're going to turn right and move forward again. So again, you can engage your students in the problem solving, right? How, what's going on? Why, why isn't this agent moving the way we want it to? And it's a great um, exercise for students as they begin to troubleshoot and reflect on their work and uh, really learn what it means to be a coder because you really do have to kind of understand the code and understand you know how to problem solve it okay and so just being able to give the students the head start um, but it's okay for them to struggle it's okay for them to to not be able to um, solve the problem immediately because this is going to build that resilience that's going to build uh, those problem solving skills that we want all of our students to have. You know, I think, I think in education, especially as students get older, it's not so much about giving them um, information as it is about giving them ways of thinking and ways of solving problems. And uh, Minecraft can definitely help students do that, okay? So I have about five minutes left and I do want to take a quick tour of the resources that are available for Minecraft. So let's go back and I'm going to go ahead and exit that for a second. Oops, let's see. Um, exit, exit, save and exit. And so I'll have that. Okay. And So one of the one of the uh, great tools is on education.minecraft.net. So I'm going to go there real quick and pull that over. All right, and so here, a couple of things you you'll, you'll want to 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 get to. Uh, one is the download. Okay, so if you want to get this for your devices, it is, this is not the day for our 
internet to slow down, but you can go here and download it for Windows, again, Mac, or your iPads. If you want to get the Android version, you do have to go to the Android Play Store to get that one, okay? Uh, so not only that, uh, there are, again, a, a number of lessons that uh, students can use, so you can find a lesson. And uh, of course, you can do this through the Minecraft uh, world as well, but I believe there, there are more on the, uh, on the website. So again, for whatever your content area, you're able to find uh, lessons, uh, the featured lessons for coding. And another thing that you can do is in the community, if you want to connect with others, you can find uh, Minecraft mentors uh, that can help you. I like this guy. And hey, that guy right there, you know, Steve Hickman can help you as a Minecraft uh, education mentor if you want to do that as well. So you can definitely find help by many other people, probably people that are, are far more qualified than I, but um, it's definitely an opportunity to find the help that you need. Again, you have lessons, you have tutorials, uh, everything that you need. You don't have to be a coder, you don't have to be a gamer, because if you let your students uh, join this world and expose them to it, I think not only are they going to learn, but they're going to enjoy learning. And, and if you can do that, then you've solved you know, much of the problem of education. So uh, the link there is education.minecraft.net. I'll type that into the chat. And we do have a few questions, uh, a few, uh, a couple minutes for our questions. So I'm going to go ahead and open up your mics if you want to do that. And you can unmute yourself. Or again, I, I wasn't able to really pay much attention to the chat as we were going. So if you do have a question, you can either put it in the chat now that I'm, it, it has my full attention, or you can just unmute yourself and ask that question. And I'll do my best to answer it for you. Hi, Steve. This Hello. is Aaron Rios from Coachella Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, thank you very much for this. I think this is going to be a great tool in classrooms. I'm just wondering, I teach in SDC setting, so kindergarten through third grade, and I'm wondering what sort of abilities my students would need to have in order to process through this, meaning mm -hmm. could we set something up where there are, are auto instructions or excuse me, audio instructions rather mm -hmm. than typewritten instructions? Great question. Thank you for that. Okay, so I'm going to go back into uh, the world that I just came out of for a second in this code builder tutorial. And uh, one wonderful thing about this is if you do have students that are non-readers, let's find another, oh, there's a, I'm gonna go over to that NPC for a second here. Okay. And so here, as I, sorry, the castle's closed, but what if my students can't read? Well, immersive reader is built right into um, Minecraft Education Edition, so. If, there, if a student is a non-reader, we can use that. And again, not typically this slow, but here we go. And then I can just play the audio. Sorry, the castle is closed. Okay. Today to celebrate the agent trials. Come back and see us soon. Okay. And of course, with Immersive Reader, I can change the pacing. I can go through and identify the nouns and verbs in a, in, in a, a, a sentence or the adjectives or whatever the case might be, okay? And so that is definitely one way. I can even, if I have longer things, I can focus the, the reading there on paragraphs or, or larger sections uh, with the picture dictionary. If I have celebrate, I can click on that and then, hey, there's some uh, visual cues as to what that word means. So uh, I think that's a great tool for helping students who, who are not readers or um, to use Minecraft Education Edition. And so whatever you put on the signs or, or on the posters or in your NPCs, they can use Immersive Reader to assist them in that regard. 
Thank you. And then a mm -hmm. follow-up question. Mm -hmm. In the math portion that you were showing us earlier, mm -hmm. it started third, fourth, and fifth. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming you can go higher with mathematics. Do they also teach basic mathematics or kinder first through mm -hmm. second? Um, there are lessons in, in the lesson bank. If you go through the education.minecraft.net, um, there are lessons, I, I do believe, there for really all grade levels. So, you know, maybe not the higher, higher math, but then that just relies upon, of course, the teacher's creativity to really uh, bring those, um, those concepts to life. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, yes, what? I had one. Mm -hmm. uh, it follows up on the non-reader question. Yes. Uh, when you were typing the code blocks, you were typing in left, right. That might be a little difficult for kindergartners. Mm -hmm. How do you get around that with kinder? Well, in, in that case, what you'd probably want to do is I'm gonna, pause this for a second and let's see if I can pull this and this may have to be my last question because I think my time is up but um, if you do have any uh, more questions or if I can help you I'm going to put my email address here in the chat before I answer this one okay and um, let's see so one thing that I would do I have to change my, there we go. It's so unusual that our internet is, is, is slow today. So I have um, in my notes the, uh, you know what, it may still be in my, let's see. I'll paste this right here, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over. So it's, as you create your um, activities, or if you wanna give students some help with the tutorials, again, whatever you can make things ahead of time, you can upload them to the Make Code site. And with that, there may not be, hmm, there, there probably is, you know, some slight um, literacy skills that may be needed, but students can pattern match, right? This is left, this is right, and um, help them in that regard. So hopefully this will pop up here soon. And what this is, th this is these are the uh, commands and things that I imported into uh, Minecraft, and that way they'll have a head start and they'll know how to do that. And again, part of the learning, uh, they'll be encouraged if they can make their their um, their robot or their agent move. They'll, they'll again breaking down those barriers that they're solving problems that are relevant to them. They'll be more encouraged to try to learn, you know, how to spell left or right or whatever the case might be. And so, it does look like uh, my internet here is is letting me down here, but um, that may be an option as well. Okay. Yes, that's a great point, uh, Isela. Just give them a, give them some kind of uh, legend or whatever the case might be, so that they can see what words they need to do. Well, there it is, finally coming. So, and with this, right? And so I have all of these commands that are already built in. That all I had to do was click share, and once I get that code, I can publish it, and I'll get the URL for it and students can import that in or perhaps with your help, they can import that. So um, really that's all I have time for, but I do thank you for joining me in this and I do hope it was something that um, you plan to use. And if we can do additional training on uh, other features of Minecraft, uh, we can do that as well. And so I can get that code copy and then I'd be able to import it into the Minecraft world and that would give students a head start. But again, you don't want to give them too much help because we want them to struggle a little bit. Struggling is good, okay? So it's productive struggle. So thank you very much and I uh, hope you have a great rest of this conference. All right, take care. Okay, bye-bye.